All right, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go below, subscribe to the new Hustlers Kung Fu and watch the new video. And let's get off into this video. Her name is The Upgrade or Kiki. And I just put a little snippet of the video here. You all have noticed the changes in the economy. Everything is so expensive nowadays. It's crazy. I really just wanted to have a conversation. So feel free to leave your complaints down in the comments below. This is a safe space. I wanted to mention something that I forgot to say on the last video I uploaded but I am no longer a budgeting content creator. My goal is not to be a financial guru. My goal is to just be open with you all and taking you all on this journey called my life. I'm not a know-it-all. I really don't know what I'm doing. I don't know who I am. I don't have life figured out. I'm not the person to look to for that. I'm just a very open book type person and I like to share my experiences for those who might be going through something similar. So just remember when you're watching my content, you're watching someone who's just trying to figure her life out, right? Just like everybody else. I'm just doing it on camera. So now let's go ahead and get into the video. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and let's get started. Number one, let's start off with my comment about normalized poverty because that's something I really noticed. I am not mad at the content creators who are showing alternative ways of living, right? I'm not mad at them for showing the RV living, tiny home living. I actually appreciate them showing other ways to live because- a And there's a link where you can go to her channel and watch the whole video. And she put up this video that titled, This Economy Sucks. And it's been up two days and it's got 23,000 views and the comments are pretty much echoing her, her viewpoints in the video, right? And I'm just sitting here like, I asked myself that what was going on and then I really, really kinda got into it and I'm trying to find, ah, here it is. Here's this book. Okay, if you haven't gotten this book, Check it out, the upside, because this explains everything. There, there's a number of content creators who are putting out videos talking about, there's a number, there's a, there's a ton of YouTube creators putting out the housing crash videos. They've been putting out the housing crash videos for about four or five years and the housing market hasn't crashed, but the housing market hasn't crashed for a small segment of America. Because, you know, one of the things that I was trying to actually understand, because the housing market has not crashed for a small segment of Americans. The housing market has not crashed for a small segment of Americans. I keep saying that, right? Because for a larger percentage of America, the housing market has indeed crashed. Right now, the average home price is like $436,000 and you need an income of over 100K to afford that house with a traditional mortgage. So there, there's two channels we need to look at. There's the channel of statistic reality. From a statistic reality standpoint, the housing market hasn't crashed. But for a practical reality standpoint, the market has indeed crashed for a large number of Americans. And that's something I really thought, because I was watching this video and it just like, it hit me. And this is why, once again, it, you should just go ahead, get this book, you know, I got it on Audible and check it out because it, it talks about the demographics and the norms because literally every YouTuber or TikToker that talks about how bad the housing market is, how bad, and I'll, I'll be going on as we get into the topics, there is a huge, huge, huge pool of video viewers who are in that boat. See, this, this is where I got messed up. I got messed up because I was looking at the empirical data. I wasn't looking at the practical reality because, you know, from a, you know, from a statistical numerical value, the economy today is not as bad as it was in 2009, 2010, 
2011, 2012, 2013 for me. That's something that I have to really, really put for me. Actually, it wasn't bad for me at that point, but the Great Recession, as it was called, this impacted a lot of people. And we did have a housing market crash, a true housing market crash, where some houses lost 50% of their value. But what's going on today, and it's the internet, and this TikTok, is we have several different channels of viewers. And right now, once again, there's a huge number of Americans who cannot afford a house cannot afford a house. So for that group of Americans, there indeed is a housing market issue. Let's call it an issue because we like to use the term housing market crash because, you know, that sounds more salacious, but the housing market hasn't crashed. But what has happened is the housing market has created a unique and distinct dynamic that the average person working a 40 hour a week job cannot afford a house in America in 2024. That's a reality. That is a distinctive reality. And once again, going back to the book Upside, the demographics, what is the largest demographic in America? People who don't make a lot of money. I would say that's 75% of America. 75% of America doesn't make a lot of money. So that's a huge, huge, because literally there's this guy, Michael B. He, he talks about real estate. He put up a video the other day. He got 1.4 million views. And then there's Jeremiah Babe. He gets views. There's the Economic Ninja. He gets views. And I literally, anyone that's putting up a video that is talking about <clears throat> economic drama, how bad things are, has a specific and unique audience that's tuning in. Because when I started to think about it, I was like, oh my God, that's why. Because you'll literally, um, if you're a content creator and you talk about, you know, like this thing with jobs. Now, I've not had a job. <laughs> 25 years. I've not had a job. So I, I really don't know about that. But what I can say is the jobs market today is different. Yes, we don't have 10, 11, 12, 14% unemployment. We don't. But the job market, once again, and this is something because I haven't had a job in 24 years. I really don't know what it's like out there in terms of getting your jobs. The job market is very, very multi-layered. And there's something that's going on because there's too many people talking about it for it just to be a facade. The companies are advertising jobs that they're not hiring people for. This is a, a fact. And what they're doing, and this is something, remember a few years ago when there was quiet quitting? And remember after the pandemic, when employees were able to take advantage because, you know, it was a really, well, guess what? <laughs> Employers have struck back. You had quiet quitting. You had all this other stuff. I want to work remote. Now, large companies are advertising jobs that they're not hiring for. And literally, and once again, this is about layers. Once again, go back to the, you know, the book upside go back to the book upside it talks about this there's layers who's mostly impacted by this new job situation 75 percent of america these are people who don't have unique skill sets these are people who don't have degrees these are people or there's a case of some people who do have degrees and they're in a specialty that doesn't pay a lot of money so there's a huge number of people who are impacted by this job situation. Even though the job situation isn't as bad as it was in 2009, 10, 11, 12. But once again, if you are a member of that population and you're struggling 
to find a job. You're struggling to get your money correct. You're struggling. You're out here just literally trying to figure some stuff out. The market is very, very bad if you're a person in that demographic. And there's a lot of people in these demographics as told to us by this, the, the viewership. Because essentially social media is a reporting mechanism. You have people who are in this situation who are coming to TikTok, who are coming to YouTube, and they're reporting what's going on with their lives. And once again, from a statistical, empirical, numer, you know, Jamie Dimon, the, the president of Chase Bank, the economy's just fine based upon statistical numbers. And he's right. But based on a personal economy, based on a personal economy, the economy sucks for a lot of people. And this is why I said 75%, because literally it's the top 25% that's pushing the housing market. They're buying houses because they can afford to buy houses. And once again, the housing market is very different because you have a lot of people who bought houses when interest rates were crazy low, who don't have to move. And they're like, I'm not trying to join this party. So they're not putting their houses on the market. So there's a housing shortage, which just amplifies the situation. Even though from an empirical standpoint, there is no housing shortage, but from a practical reality standpoint, there's a very much a housing shortage. Let's talk about rent. I went back to my first apartment that I stayed in when I came to Sandy Springs. Rent was like $9.50 for a two bedroom, right? $9.50. That same apartment today rents for $2,600. Two bedroom, which is one of the large units. Uh, I think that apartment was like 1,200 square feet. So I went ahead and did a little excavating and I started talking to people. I had this lady show me in a, a one bedroom apartment. Let me explain to you. I, I, I just went out and did this and it just literally blew my mind. Showed me a one bedroom apartment that literally came in. It was a kitchen over here. There was like a living room area. There was like the wall was kind of diagonal and then there was a bedroom. This, this was maybe 500, 600 square feet. They were renting that for $1,900 per month. $1,900 per month. So this is why two bedrooms are like much more expensive, much more expensive. So with inflation, which is a real number, a real thing is happening it is driven up the prices of apartments. So if you're in that 75% just can't afford to buy a house, you can't afford to rent a really nice apartment, this is a very real and distinct problem. Because now, you know, I put up the video by Lavelle Williams and he's talking about working. Um, We'll, we'll, we'll get back to that in a minute, but these people are working two and three jobs, but they just don't make enough money to afford a decent lifestyle here in the United States at the present moment in 2024. So there's a lot of talk that these people don't want to work. I don't think that's true. I think these people are working. I think these people are working multiple jobs, but they haven't plugged into the good jobs like Lavelle Williams. He's doing something in transportation and then he comes out and I think he does Instacart and some other stuff. He's a straight up hustler, but the average person doesn't have that level of hustleability. And this is something that I have to recognize because I had crazy hustleability in my life. This is how I was able to work 12, 14, 15, 16 hours a day for years. I was able to do that for years. 
But the average person has a full time job, has a part time job. And they, they don't really get to hang out with their wife or kids if they're married. They don't get to see their friends. They're working. And th this is right here is the hardest part. You're working like a maniac and you're barely getting by. That's the hardest part. Because now I look at the comments, because one of the things I do when I see these videos, when people talk about how bad the economy is, I start to look at the comments and these people are suffering. They're suffering because they're working as hard as they can and they just, it's just ain't enough. And this is why van life has taken off. This is why people are living in their cars. Go to YouTube. Look up a video living in my car, living in the van. These videos are crazy popular because a lot of people have said, look, I'm working a full time job. I'm working a part time job. I only have time to enjoy life. Screw it. I'm going to move into a van. I'm going to, you know, uh, there's this couple who incidentally don't have to live in the van. Their name is Nate and Kara. You go to YouTube, put in Nate and Kara. You'll see they have millions of subscribers and they literally travel all over the world. They, by choice, lived in the van for two years, even though they didn't have to. I was to say they're making fifty, sixty thousand dollars a month, AdSense revenue. But they they enjoy that lifestyle. They truly enjoy that lifestyle. They didn't do it just for the tube. They did it because they enjoyed it. So this is the situation that we have, because if you look at the government numbers, we're not in the recession. Actually, let's go ahead and. Uh, do this real quick. Uh, let's see. Let's see. First quarter GP D twenty twenty four. The real domestic gross profit for the first quarter increased at an annual rate of 1.6. Okay. So let's go to the second quarter. The second quarter went up to 4.2. So from Government numbers from GDP numbers, we're not even close to a recession. We're not even close to a recession. So from the government numbers, from the economy numbers, we're not in a recession. Unemployment's low. But let's go ahead and talk about the real people numbers. Real people are suffering. Real people are really, really suffering. And, you know, I, I'll, I'll go ahead and submit my apology because I made fun of the TikTok people. I made fun of that because I was just sitting there. Because once again, it wasn't me. I wasn't in that economy. I wasn't suffering. So I didn't see it because I was looking at the government numbers. I was looking at the numbers of my peers. I was looking at my lifestyle. But the real human issue is that people are suffering tragically suffering. This is why you literally got people losing their minds. And this is one of the things that I'm designing, describe, designing the new Hustlers Kung Fu for the people who want to make a change. I'm about to say something. You know, years and years ago, I used to be in the 75% situation. I was working a full-time job. I was working a part-time job. And I was struggling. I was struggling. And then I actually created some fiction. I'll, I'll tell you what I did. I created my own reference. Back then, everyone didn't carry a cell phone. Everyone carried a pager. This is how long ago this was. I created my own reference. There was a company in Norcross that provided voice services, something like Google Voice, which does it for free. And I hired that service, and I got me a job making $38,000 a year, adjusted for inflation. That's like me starting off at 65 most money I ever made in my life. And that changed the trajectory of my situation. It completely 
changed everything in my life completely because I got more money, I got more time, but more importantly, I got a much better network. There was this guy, his name was John, and we used to do cold calling and stuff. We had developed some stuff. We had developed a friendship. And I developed a network where John was able to loan me a laptop. He said, hey, take this laptop and you can do some stuff at home. So this is one of the things. Let me go ahead and say this and let me be really, really um, delicate because people begin messed up. If you're part of that 75%, you don't typically have extra resources. But because I got the job at Rent-A-Crate and I entered into a resource-rich environment, I had people who had the ability to let me borrow their laptop, had the ability, I, I, all kinds of stuff that would happen because I had gotten into a different climate, gotten into a different situation. And one of the things that I really, really saw was the differences. And this is me using today's mindset to think back to yesterday that when I left the 75% and moved up to the top 25%, my life changed. And this is one of the things that I'm going to do with the new Hustlers Kung Fu. One of the things that I'm getting ready to set up, one of the things I'm getting ready to really, really rock out with in terms of me doing certain things. I, like you, was a regular person in the 75%. And I understood, and this this is where I think a lot of people really, really go wrong. They're working a full-time job, working a part-time job. I got laid off. And I remember, and this is the time when I entered into Earl Nightingale, I had gotten laid off and I had came to a new realization that it was upon me to solve my problems. Now, if I had not started listening to Earl Nightingale, probably wouldn't have had this ability, probably wouldn't have had this thought process. So listening to Earl Nightingale, when I got laid off, I said, I'll go home and figure it out. And this is when I created my reference. And this is how I got the job. It literally took me six weeks from six weeks from the point I got laid off. Six weeks later, I had a job at rent a crate. And I had been in that boarding house for close to three years. What changed? Did my situation change? No. My situation was the same. I changed. I changed my mindset. I changed my thinking. I changed the way that I attack problems. And this is where a lot of people are running into issues. They're running into a lot of issues because they don't understand that their situation, if you're in that 75%, you're not making enough money to buy a house, or you're in that position where you're unskilled labor, your situation is not going to change. And I feel that a lot of people do not understand that their situation isn't going to change. Because, you know, as I was sitting here, like, I saw this video about the upgrade and, you know, some of the stuff, and it just hit me. It just hit me. For these people who are unable to afford a house, there's a housing issue. I'm not going to call it a crash. It's an affordability issue. It's not a crash for these people who are struggling to find decent jobs. It's a skill set issue. It's a really a big skill set issue. It's not because right now um, there are jobs out there like computer jobs, data scientist jobs, that if the right person came in qualified, they would get hired just like that. So it's about qualifications. But once again, the 75% doesn't understand the environment that they're in. And what I see with the comments is they come in and they come in and everyone is miserable, upset, struggling. Uh, The upgrade talked about uh, I should, you know, filing bankruptcy is not a bad thing. Um, there was a lot of conversations. People were talking about it and just going through the comments because I, I linked the video below so you can go ahead and watch it and just read the comments. Just read the comments. People are struggling. People are um, 
going through this situation where they don't understand the environment that they live in. They don't understand what's going on. They don't understand what problems they're actually facing. They really don't understand that. And with this lack of understanding, the struggle continues to persist because, you know, myself and other people will say certain things that are statistically true based upon our reality. But for the person in that 75 percent, these things are not even close to true. Seventy five percent of the country cannot afford to buy a house today. And this is and these are people who are working 40 hours a week, many people working a 40 hour job and a part time job. And many of these people have a side hustle and they still don't make enough money to afford to do these things. They still don't make enough money because in the, the words of the upgrade, the economy sucks. And it does because we've had massive inflation. How do we have massive inflation pandemic and the government printed up 80 percent of the money that's in circulation in just a, a look, about two years, 80 percent. So this huge thrust of money into the economy created dramatic inflation. We've seen dramatic inflation. Right. And if you're part of that 75 percent. And if you're out here struggling, you need clarity. You number one, and I'll kind of walk you through some steps because once again, my first two years in that boarding house, I was just like you. I was working. I was pissed off. I was upset. I was just like, how come none of this stuff is working out? I'm working hard. I wasn't a criminal. I had no problem going to work and my life just continued to suck. It just continued to suck. Because I didn't understand that my situation, lack of skills, my position in life, that wasn't going to change until I changed it. And I feel that that's where a lot of people in the 75 percent are, because if you look at the comments, everyone literally wants the economy to crash, really, really crash. I'm talking about they want to see housing prices go down by 30 percent. Now, here's the thing, and this is once again, I'm not trying to be um, disrespectful, but if we were in an economy where housing prices crashed 30 percent, we would be in the Great Recession number two. Housing is a big driver of the economy. So what they want is actually the crash of the United States of America. And I don't see that happening because once again, I've looked up the numbers, right? We're not in a recession. We're, we're so far from a recession. And this is one of the reasons like you will literally see content creators putting out videos talking about we're in a recession. I think this depends upon who you talk to, where they are. Uh, there's this guy, Reventure Consulting. He's been doing videos talking about the housing crash and he puts up graphics and numbers and he has a very devoted and loyal audience of 75 percenters who watch his content and everything. And he could put, he put up a video the other day talking about uh, Capital One was closing credit accounts and that video got a lot of views. So if you are putting out really good and th this, this is where things get really, really messed up. Shout out to Lavelle Williams. Shout out to the credit plug. Shout out to all things real. You're going to struggle. If you're putting out really good, helpful, use of, helpful information, I'll tell you, remember when I took my two month break, I had put up a video that was talking about how to be helpful in bad times and it didn't, it didn't get views. And what I'm beginning to see and what I'm beginning to feel is these people are at burnout level. They're just burnout, just completely burnout. And they can't even see anything that will help them. They just can't working the full time, working the part time. They just can't. But once again, and this is something that I've talked about in many, many videos, it's about skill set problem. It's about skill sets, having the right skill sets. And a lot of people just don't understand that Yes, you went to college and got a degree in sociology, but guess what? The only job you can get is serving someone at a restaurant. 
that that's that's because your skill sets, because sociology isn't a highly paid skill set such as engineering or certain medical degree, medical degrees. You can go become a certified nurse anesthetist. You're 150 K a year, 200 K a year. Um, but once again, these degrees are not easy. They're stressful. People struggle to get them. And that's what you got to do if you want to exit the 75 percent, because like literally this has just been puzzling me for the longest time because I've been sitting there like we're not in a recession. We don't have a housing crash. And because I was looking at it with the wrong eye, I was looking at it with the wrong eye. I was looking at it at a statistical eye. And then when I started to look at the human quota, what people who were going through, what people were struggling with, at that point, I woke up. And that's when I saw what the real issue, because once again, it's not a housing crash, but it is an affordability issue. This is a very real and distinct fact. And this is why anyone that comes up with a video talking about a housing crash, these people gravitate because a housing crash means that the prices go down and the affordability issue disappears. So this is one of the things that I am seeing. This is one of the things that um, is it's a little crazy. It's a little crazy what's going on. So one of the things that you guys have got to understand, and this, this is something that I'm going to probably, let's see, yeah, probably start advertising this. Uh, I'm going to start helping people in a very different manner. Number one, this will not be free. And let me explain why it will not be free. Um, before I took my break, I was getting on the phone, I was talking to people, and I had a whole group of people who were unemployed, who had no money. Okay, how are you going to change your life with no money? Please answer that in the comments. How are you going to change your life? You have no money to invest in training, no money to buy anything. And I'm not talking about you have to be rich, but you need to have about five to $10,000 either through your credit card or something so you can go ahead and get some new training. So it's not going to be free. I've, I've done that for years and years. I've gave away free courses and stuff, and I just got a really bad email list because of my helpfulness. So this is something I'm going to work with. One of the things I'm getting to do, getting ready to do, one of the things I'm getting ready to start talking about, one of the things that I'm getting ready to open the books on is how do you go from being in that 75% to you getting in that 25%? And it's about skill sets and stuff. And this is one of the reasons, because now I understand why certain content creators do what they do. Because once again, that book, Upside, the audience is huge. The audience is huge. There's this new guy. Well, he's not new. He's been on YouTube for nine years. But recently, he started putting out a collection of extremely well-edited videos. His name is Cam James. His videos are, I mean, it, it looks like a television production. I mean, they really put a lot of work in there and people appreciate his content and his channel is growing, growing, growing. Uh, Cam James, and he just put out something about the shade room, which once again, let's go ahead and talk about the shade room. Who does the shade room cater to? The 75%. That's why they have such a large audience. They're not, they're not trying to get doctors and CEOs and they, don't, they, they care less about that. They're not trying to get those people. They want the 75%. And this allows them to put out the most salacious, ill-advised content that they can. And they're not worried about losing their audience because it's the 75%. The Shade Room makes a ton of money putting out the most scandalous, homophobic stuff. And they will continue to do stuff and they will continue to make money because it is catered to the 75%. Major wrestling, who does that cater to? The 75%. So if you build something that is catered to that 75% market, you will make money. You will make money. And one of the things that I'm beginning to understand, cause like, you know, um, the upgrade, she, she took a break and she just came back and her channel's exploding with views because she's talking about real people issues. You know, she talked about her visit, her business failed, her car rental business failed. And I actually did a little research. She lost six cars. 
which I can easily believe. I can easily believe that because at one point I had 12 red cards and her content, you know, her video starts off. I'm a complainer. I believe in complaining. She's speaking 75% language, 75% language. And one of the things that I am beginning to see is this group of people is struggling. This group of people is hurting. And this group of people um, really, really needs understanding of where their situation is and understanding what they're doing. This is one of the things that this group of people need. So for that 75%, can't buy a house, rent an apartment, very difficult, very challenging, very expensive, getting a better job, really, really expensive. Uh, the economy does suck. It really does.